Okay, everyone, welcome uh, to the webinar today, uh, Fall into Health Holistically. So I'm happy that you're here to join us. Uh, feel free to share this webinar uh, with any family and friends or loved ones that you think may benefit from this. So I'm really excited. Let's jump into it and get started. So um, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Dr. Dawn Siglain. I go by Dr. Dawn. Uh, it's a little easier just to remember and it flows well. So feel free to just call me Dr. Dawn. I'm a doctor of naturopathic medicine, um, licensed in Connecticut. But I'm also able to uh, do what I love here in the state of New York. I work at Inner Source Health. Um, I'm also a, an acupuncturist uh, and a Reiki practitioner here. Uh, I also am very interested in exercise physiology and supporting the body in all ways. Um, and I have my training as a NASM personal trainer. And I also started along this whole journey as a health coach. So naturopathic medicine. So for anyone who this is the first time that they're hearing it uh, and don't be, uh, don't feel like you're the only one. There's a lot of people I tell them what I do and, and they've never heard of it before. So I'm always happy to share about naturopathic medicine. And there's three uh, ways that when you leave a visit with a naturopathic doctor, you'll have a health plan and it includes nutrition, first and foremost, healthy habits or lifestyle changes that may benefit you to get you on the path for your wellness, as well as any beneficial supplements that can help you. Uh, so a first visit with the naturopathic doctor is 90 minutes. It's a uh, comprehensive medical intake from your prenatal health up to what you had for breakfast that day. Everything in between. Feel free to bring in, in labs. We'll take a look at those. Um, we'll ask you tons of questions about your health um, and ask you tons of questions about your life in general. You may have never been asked that by a doctor. So, but it all matters. So um, in terms of falling into health holistically today, um, naturopathic medicine is holistic. Um, it's about the whole person. So everything that you do, everything that you think about, um, everything that you eat, it's all important and, and plays a part into your overall wellness. Hippocrates said it, and many people have been saying it through the years, food as medicine. So that's what I'll be talking about uh, first today is we'll talk about nutrition, all the yummy things that you can be eating um, and things to think about from both a naturopathic perspective as well as a traditional Chinese medicine perspective. So when it comes to good foods to eat, you always wanna think about eating with the seasons. And I'll explain as to why this is important. And there's a correlation between different colors of food and the organs that they benefit. So, um, so let's jump into this. So eating with the seasons, so choose foods that were harvested that season. I belong to um, a community supported agriculture, uh, also called the CSA in my town. Um, it's where the, it's um, a friend who, a, a man in town that I've met and you know we've become good friends. Uh, I call him Farmer Joe and he has, he, he dedicates his life to helping um, pe people achieve really good food um, that he's grown and he's harvested and he has the farm right on his, his lawn there, which is great. And he also has another farm. So he's been expanding and, um, and he grows this delicious food. He puts all the nutrients back into the soil um, and these veggies taste different than anything you'll ever buy in the store. So it's really wonderful. If you have a CSA near you, I encourage you uh, to join and you get weekly food from him, uh, you know, or at least buy, you know, organic near you. So, um, or think about having your own garden and growing your own food. So just one step at a time, always little things to think about. Um, it's wonderful that he has his own farm because you think about um, giving back to the earth, making the most, um, you know, and using mother nature um, for your own health. So if you're able to get food um, that's grown, um, from someone who knows what they're doing uh, with the earth. That's really wonderful. It really does taste good. And why to do that for the environmental support, okay? It really does support um, nature when you're eating with the seasons. Um, less important in exporting, you're getting local food, you're eating local um, and it benefits you. It's you're, you're, you're able to um, really vibe 
with the environment, vibe with nature, and eat what's fresh and good for you for that time. Vibrational healing. So there's, uh, you know, when you eat whole foods uh, that's fresh, it, it has this energetic quality to it. Um, and and it, it vibes with are the cells of our body. You know, we want to eat real whole food. It makes us feel alive. So eating these delicious living plants, food um, that's fresh with the seasons helps our own vibrational healing as well. And then balance, right? It brings us back into balance. So, um, so, and that's always what our body's seeking, you know, whether uh, we're healthy or we're not feeling well, we're always trying to bring it back to balance. So eating with the seasons is one wonderful way of doing that. I remember one time, um, and I haven't done this in a while, but it was when I was in medical school for a whole week, I prepared food for myself. It was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I remember I was studying, so it was easy just to bring food, you know, so I didn't have to go out. Um, I mean, I usually did do that, but there would always be a breakfast here or I would go out for dinner with friends. But for this week, I prepared all of my food. And at the end of the week, I just felt really good. I felt really harmonious with the world. Things just stress was less. Um, and I was in a very stressful environment. I was always taking tests multiple times a day, but there was something about eating food that I prepared for myself. Um, I put the love into the food, the love went back into me. It felt really good. So if you have that time to do it, I encourage you to try to do it. At least do that little week um, experiment that I did. See how it works for you. It was really interesting. I'll never forget it. Um, and I really should be doing that more often. So I do it for, you know, as often as, often as I can. Um, home cooked food is always the best food, right? Especially from someone that you love who makes it. So paired organs. So this is where organs and colors come in. So all of the, as you see here on the screen, the, the yin organs um, or the solid organs are on the left and then they're paired, paired with the yang organs or yang organs, however you say it, organs that have um, like kind of like a, a, a tunnel through them. You know, they're, they have, um, they have space in between them, right? They're vessels, so to speak. So the heart is paired with the small intestine. The liver is paired with the gallbladder, the spleen with the stomach, um, which is all about digestion there. The spleen and the stomach, we talk about this a lot in Chinese medicine um, and supporting digestion and supporting those two organs. So they're really important. The kidney is paired with the bladder. They're both part of the lower jiao uh, or the lower uh, dantian or so there's upper, middle, and lower. So the, the kidney and bladder are part of that. And then the lung and the large intestine. So the lung and the large intestine are really important for this season, for the fall in particular. I'm gonna get that in, I'm gonna get into that a little bit more. So just thinking about um, these two organs, the yin and the yang function and having that balance. So we always wanna support both the yin and the yang. So the yin, um, has that structure and then the yang has a function of moving through the body, um, so to speak. So eating with each season. So there it is, the lung and the large intestine for fall. And, um, and that's what I'll be focusing on today. And then the liver gallbladder uh, corresponds with spring, the heart and the small intestine early summer. Um, in Chinese medicine, they break it up into late summer also. And that's the spleen and stomach there and then the kidney and bladder for the winter. Okay, but the lung and large intestine with fall, the color uh, to support the, um, this season is white actually. So all sorts of foods that are white, like cauliflowers. Um, and there's tons of food that are, you know, not white that are really popular this season, like pumpkin, for example, that is, is orange and full of those beautiful carotenoids. Uh, and antioxidants. But when we're thinking about supporting uh, certain organs for certain functions, we think about color and the one color is, um, is white. So I'll be talking about some more, um, more foods with that. So something to keep in mind. And here are the colors of food. So, and I've corresponded it to them, heart um, being red, liver green, spleen yellow, kidney black, and the lungs White. So we'll focus more with the with the lung for now, um, and talking about about that. So um, so one of my favorite things, uh, my little pearls that I love to use, um, when we think about the lungs, 
uh, if someone, if you're not feeling well, you tend to have a cough, right? That's one of the first things that come up. One of my favorite recommendations is um, if someone has a cough that's uh, like out of control, which you know we've been experiencing during this um, during this time, uh, is eating a boiled Asian pear. So those circular Asian pears um, that are often in the styrofoam casing that you'll see. Uh, so they're in season now. Um, you can also find them in the Asian markets if they're around in your area. And boiling the water so bring the water to a boil, a small pan, uh, pot rather. You put the pear in there for about five minutes. Uh, it's going to get nice and soft. You put the pear in a little bowl and um, you can also, so you can eat the pear just with a spoon. It really helps to calm the lung chi. It can really be good um, for a sore throat, calming a cough, um, any kind of upper respiratory um, symptom that you're feeling. And it can really help with that. And then you can just drink the liquid um, from that, from that pear, from the boiled pear. And that's a nice little tea to drink afterward. Um, it's really calming. It's really soothing. So tastes to support each organ. So, uh, with the heart, um, so you can think of, you know, you can always tune in with your body, say, you know, what am I craving? What, what does my body need now? Think about that also. But if we're thinking about for specific organ to su support different functions, the heart, things that are bitter. So um, red beets or chili pepper with the liver, sour foods can support. So if we're looking to support detox, um, if we have a, you know, sluggish where we want to support that liver, um, something like Brussels sprouts, lime, if we're supporting our digestive function with the spleen, um, some taste there is sweet. So pumpkins and yams, sweet potatoes, those are, would be all good foods for the spleen. Kidney, uh, the taste to support that organ is salty, right? Makes sense. We always want to make sure that we have good sodium, potassium functioning in the kidney. So, that, so it makes sense. I love when it corresponds to um, Chinese medicine and naturopathic. And so good food there is seaweed, like little seaweed chips. They have them in the little packages um, and you can snack on those. So those are really good to have on hand. And then the lung is like a pungent sort of taste. So onions and garlic, right, are really good. Um, and when you think of garlic, like they look like little lungs just hanging around, right, in a little pouch. Um, so great. So garlic is one of my favorite antiviral antibacterials um, that you can have, especially if you're, you're sick and you're unsure if it's viral or bacterial. Um, you dice up a raw garlic and um, eat. You dice it up and then immediately, even if it gets nicked, right, right as soon as it gets diced up, you want to eat that within seconds of dicing it up. Um, it could be really, really pungent. Some people cannot handle that. Uh, you can have it with some nut butter or if you eat honey, there's um, Manuka honey is a powerful antibiotic. Just have a spoon ready to go with the Manuka honey. Get that Manuka honey on the spoon, dip it into the garlic and eat it and chew it up. Um, it's a real, real powerhouse there when it comes to antivirals and bacterial. Um, so, so there we have the lung helping us, right? That helps to support you during flu season, right? So if you're going to get sick, so, so it's a great food to always have on hand. And then for the seasons, um, so foods for each season. So I have these listed here. Um, I have their uh, pears also come up in the early summer. I wanted to um, remember I told my pear story, but I already shared about that. So with the Asian pear, which is really, um, really great to have if you're feeling any upper respiratory issues. Um, so the spring has tons of foods um, and you'll see, you know, they're mixed with colors, but in each season, there's different foods that are in season. So there's different ways to approach it, you know, and to look for it. So again, if you have a farm that's near you or a CSA that's near you and you can get your food locally, then you're going to be in really good hands. You don't have to think about it too much. They're, they're going to know what's in season for you. Um, and then, so we'll go ahead to the fall because this is the month that we're in. Uh, so all these foods that are good. So everyone's familiar with it. So soups and broths are really great, uh, you know, to have, you know, we're having everything one of the things, and teas too. So one of the things that you want to think of, why do we always crave like teas and soups and broths when we're sick? Um, because they help to vasodilate um, 
you know, our lymphatic system, which stores a lot of toxins um, and helps to support our immune system. We always want good flow throughout the body. So we want open vessels in our arteries and our veins and our lymphatic system so that things can flow, right? So that we can purge any toxins, any kind of bacteria or virus, viral load that's in us and get it out. So that's why it's really good to have these soups and broths. You can have it preventatively. Um, and you can also, if you're feeling sick, have some warm broths because it really helps to open up, flush out, you know, and drain out um, any toxins in the body. You always want open, good flow. You know, when I do acupuncture, it's always breathe, you know, do nice, deep belly breathing. Uh, make sure that you're having nice flow so that the chi and the blood can flow through the vessels um, during the treatment. So really important. Uh, can't stress enough how beneficial it is to have some quality soups and broths around. If you have a slow cooker, that's great. You know, you can, you can have um, nice, uh, you know, you can just prepare it all day. You're smelling it. It smells good. And you can have a nice soup at the end of the day. So all these foods are really beneficial. Um, pumpkins, don't forget the pumpkin seeds, tons of nutrients jam packed in there. And that's really great. You can season it and just roast those up. And um and so I am plant-based, but I did put down, you know, any of these meats here. So there's different um, meats and fish that have more of a warming quality. And then some meats and fish that are more of like a neutral quality. So this is all um, from a Chinese medicine perspective. So then some recipe ideas. So something to think about here. Um, and I am a big fan, I'm always cooking. Um, in fact, I just whipped up um, a veggie pumpkin lasagna. And it's just really easy. You know, you, when you have, I, I don't get so caught up on recipes. I know that some people do, but you know, just have your veggies there. And I have these uh, lentil noodles, these, these green lentil lasagna noodles on hand. Um, I typically always have some kind of um, veggie pastas on hand and make sure they just have that one ingredient in it. So these lasagna noodles, um, they're, they're the perfect length. And I, so I just layer with all my greens. I'll put some pickle juice there in the bottom um, and tons of herbs and spices. So tons of oregano, basil, um, or if I got any um, basil from the farmer, from, from uh, my CSA, you know, I'll put that in there or, you know, I'll dry them up and put the nice fresh dried herbs in there, um, a little black pepper. Uh, and, and then I, um, I put, what did I put? I always do different things. So then I put red beans at the bottom. Then I put the layer of the lentil noodles. Then I put a layer of pumpkin and in the pumpkin, I mixed up onions and garlic. Um, I think I put some sage and clove in there, just like all different kind of, I think I even put a little cinnamon just to spice it up. And, um, and then I layered it with some ve veggies that I had. So there was tons of cauliflower in it, broccoli, carrots. Um, and I seasoned that also. And then poof, I was done. It was the easiest thing. But um, you can do tons of things with little uh, lasagna. I call them lasagna. or even just a big casserole dish and bake things. You know, I'll put refried beans down. So eating beans are good for the fall. They're, they're eating with the seasons, these vegetarian refried beans that I love. I'll put those down as a base. Um, put some, put some veggies, another layer of veggies, herbs, do the lentil noodles, maybe throw some um, other squash in there, acorn squash, um, zucchini. You can even do zucchini noodles if you don't want to do lentil noodles. I'll do another layer of noodles, do another layer of beans, maybe some sweet potato, tons of herbs, always remembering um, to add tons of herbs. And when you use the lasagna noodles, just a note is to keep it really, um, really moist. So whether you put like a squash or a pumpkin on top of it, or you put beans and then maybe put another, um, you know, fill the can up with some more water and layer that around or put a butternut squash soup in. So make sure that those noodles stay really moist. That's kind of the key um, to making those work. Trust me, because I've been doing this for years. So <laughs> that's the key for it. Even having pickle juice on hand, um, it, really, it, it really gives a nice flavor, but you just want those noodles to be nice and moist. Um, and so really good. So, so as long as you have the veggies, um, you're going to have a good base for cooking anything. Um, and then don't forget to, yeah, toast up those pumpkin seeds with the sea salt and you can add any kind of, uh, flavor to that, that you want also thyme, uh, oregano, anything gluten-free pumpkin bread. So some of, um, 
my favorite desserts. I just always have, you know, coconut flour on hand or almond flour on hand. I just made up, um, I was trying to make a pumpkin brownie, pumpkin cacao brownie. It turned into a pumpkin pudding, but it was totally delicious. And it was just the pumpkin puree. That's all it was. I'd added some cinnamon. I'd added, I think, a little coconut sugar to it. And um, what other spices? I think maybe that was it. And uh, oh, and then I added the the coconut flour. And um, and then I put these 100% cacao um, uh, chocolate bars and I broke them up on top. And I just, oh, I put walnuts in it too. That was really good. And I baked it up and it was delicious. I even loved it the next day. I've had it for the, the two nights since then. Um, and it hardened up a little bit in the fridge, but it was like a pudding the first day. And now it's like um, more of like a mousse. Now the next, it's great. It's fantastic. It's a really tasty treat and it's really good for you. Full of antioxidants and, and rich with uh, all the flavors that you need of the season. Quinoa squash salad. Oh, you just throw some quinoa in there, um, you know, and and anything you want you want to break up. I love some celery, um, you know, and any kind of veggies that you want in there. If you want to put some cranberries in there to make it a little sweeter, um, and then put a nice vinaigrette if you want. You may. I love mixing um, apple cider vinegar um, in with some in with a nut butter or apple cider vinegar and hummus and a mustard. And um, the more apple cider vinegar in it, then the more of a vinaigrette and the more of a liquid that it'll be really tasty, you know, and just have fun with it. So whatever, so make sure you just have your base of quinoa, have some slices of squash in there, throw in some herbs, throw in some chives, uh, onions or some garlic, you know, have something, put a little pungent, you know, into it, a little bit of, um, don't forget about about uh, you know some putting some white foods in there, so a little garlic or the onion would be really good. Um, and don't be afraid to mix flavors, you know. And if you don't like it, try again the next time you make it. You don't put it in. So, so try and get really creative with what you've got. We're throwing some crushed nuts, uh, really yummy stuff there. Cinnamon oats with chopped apples. That's really good. You could do overnight soaked oats, um, or you can make it warm that morning using. I love oat milk. Um, you know, and then easy enough to just bake up an apple, throw some cinnamon in there. It's like the easiest thing to do. Uh, and it's, the house is going to smell great. It's going to smell like that you had a cinnamon candle going and that's a great, you know, dessert to have or great breakfast to have to wake up to it. So, so always great to eat with the seasons if anyone's been going apple picking and all that and all that great stuff. I just gave, um, my dog some apples this morning and she loved it. Actually, she liked it a lot. I didn't realize I cut up, I cut up a bunch and she really ate it up. You never know what they're going to eat. Um, and making a nice, you know, if it's some apple cider with some cloves and some cinnamon sticks, you know, really have fun with it. Enjoy the season while we have it, right? The energy of the fall. So having that um, relationship balancing out, um, you know, there's uh, the lung, that yin organ and the energy of the lung is grief. And um, so is the, that energy, you know, with the fall, it's a, it's a changing, you know, things are changing in the fall. We're um, grieving the summer ending, looking, you know, forward to what's, what lies ahead of us, but really thinking about those good days of the summer. Um, and then any, anything that we might be dealing with, with grief, you know, if we're missing someone, um, this is the season where it's a good time to explore that, deal with those feelings of grief. Um, you might be noticing that grief is coming up and um, you weren't aware of it and it's coming up for you this season. So be really gentle on yourself. Uh, this is a really good time for reflection. Um, you know, so just understanding that relationship of the fall time with that organ paired with the lung and, and how it could be affecting you. So really good time to meditate, take time for yourself, go for those walks in nature, um, really get out um, and to look within for yourself with what do you need, what's going on with you. Uh, the time with the Chinese medicine clock with the lung is three to 5 a.m. If you are waking up, you know, between that time, something's coming up for you. Um, you know, what are you thinking about what's going on um, to explore that? Does it have to do with grief? Is it something to do with grief that you haven't dealt with before? And now it's just coming up. So things to think about, how is this applying for your life? Are you having trouble during that three to 5 a.m. and you're waking up? Could this be something that you could explore? 
the large intestine. Think about that with our colon, it's our vessel for excretion. So dealing with the grief and then releasing it. So seeing how those, those, um, those two organs relate to each other. So thinking about, um, are you having bowel movements? Are you having issues there? Do we need to support the large intestine? Do we need to deal with something with the lungs that in turn then can help to have a release? So there's these energetic qualities um, that, rep that are represented there that have more information for us than just face value, right? So things to think about. Um, so are you having these bowel? Are you constipated? Is it diarrhea? What's going on? Um, is there an energetic quality to it or do we really have to look towards you know digestion too to help to support the large intestine with that. So so it's really interesting um, how they're paired. And then of course all of the organs have relationships with one another. So you can't just exclude one. Um, but we're of course we're thinking about this as the whole. So if you break things apart to then put it back together, that's kind of always how we're looking at the body and, and the patients and trying to help them. So all the foods for health. So two things that always come up this season is supporting the immune system and if allergies are coming up too. Um, so people have fall allergies. And uh, so ways to support with the immune system. So soups and broths. I just was talking about that. Really important to help open up those vessels, to help clear any kind of viral, any bacteria. You want a good flow in that, in that lymphatic system. Eat those warm soups and broths and yummy teas too. And all these herbs that I've listed here, right? Citrus full of vitamin C, um, always great to take vitamin C supplement if you can, but if you're craving those citruses, um, you know, listen to your body with what you need. Broccoli, spinach, microgreens, they don't get uh, enough attention as they should. They're packed with protein, um, especially sunflower uh, seed microgreens. And they're so delicious, but talk about a power punch uh, of protein in them. So don't forget to grab some microgreens and eat them. Um, don't forget you know, to really incorporate them into your food. So, um, so I just wanted to give them a big shout out. Uh, I get them from my CSA. They're in the supermarket. Don't forget about them. Try them if you've never had microgreens before. Try them uh, and search for them. If you can't find them, um, I'm, sh I'm sure that you'll really enjoy them. So sprinkle them on. You can make a whole salad out of them. Um, they're really delicious. In fact, that's what I added to uh, the lasagna dish that I made. So there was just a whole, it was a bunch of microgreens. Actually, the celery greens were really delicious that I had. Um, and it was just delicious, delicious. So there's a whole world out there besides kale and spinach. Um, you know, so just explore the wonderful world of greens because there's a ton of them. Sencha tea uh, is full of antioxidants. So it's, and, um, it's really good for immune support. Um, so, so matcha gets a lot of credit, but also don't forget about sencha. So it's really good for your immune system. Matcha has more caffeine. Um, matcha tends to ha also have more L-theanine, but sencha is really good for the immune system. So if you like the taste of that, give it a little try. So in allergies, you want to think about calming down any inflammation that's going on. Um, so any anti-inflammatory foods, um, again, you know, tons of plants and veggies are always, you know, really anti-inflammatory for the most part. Um, if you're keeping it organic and whole food and plant-based, you're, you're, uh, you're on a good path. Turmeric, uh, that's one of the reasons why it can be really beneficial. And um, there's a great um, supplement that has bromelain, uh, curcumin, and quercetin in it um, because it helps to calm down inflammation. So, um, so onions, are, are foods that have one of the highest amounts of quercetin in it. And quercetin helps to calm down inflammation. Um, the kiwi and those citrus foods also, omega-3, so having some really good fats, uh, flax seeds, hemp seeds, um, really good stuff. You know, even the nuts, family of nuts, walnuts, you know, really good omega-3s, you know, make sure that you're getting in the omega-3s however you like them fermented foods. And if you do eat honey, having local and raw honey um, can help to support um, your immune system as well, you know, as, as allergies too. So raw versus cooks. I love talking about this um, because raw, when you have it, it, 
in the optimal form. It's nutrient dense. It's packed full with all the macronutrients when you have raw food and it's great. The problem is if you have any digestive issues, okay? Um, and if you're feeling a little sick, you wanna take any, any stress off the body if it has to digest food out of the equation, okay? If you're having digestive issues. So if you're having any gas, any bloating, any kind of reflux, any constipation, any diarrhea, you want to think about supporting your digestion and supporting your digestive fire. So if you're eating too many raw foods, and I see this a lot, you're having a cold shake in the morning, then you have a salad for lunch, then you have a salad for dinner, and then you're having a gelato or something, you know, if you, if you have something cold um, as a dessert, you're drinking a nice coffee in the morning, you're having a nice tea as a snack, during, during the day, it's too many cold foods. So now your digestive fire uh, isn't that hot anymore. You've been cooling it down. You don't wanna do that. The stomach is an acidic environment. It's full of that hydrochloric acid so that it can break down the food. It needs that fire um, to work. So you wanna support that digestive fire. So you have to look at your food. If you're eating a lot of these raw foods, even if it's just one salad a day, you know, and then ask yourself, do you get bloated after you eat the salad, that's the telltale sign. Okay, we have to support our digestive fire. So having those soups and stews and broths and hot teas are really gonna help. Have a cup of soup, um, maybe at lunch when our digestive fire is burning at the highest with the high noon. So at lunch, maybe having that cup of soup to really help that digestive fire, especially if you're at work and you don't even have time to sit and digest a meal. So that's another reason why people might not be absorbing because they're running around, whether they're running around with the kids or you know working from home or they're at the office and they're running around and they're not actually having time to sit and digest the food. And now you've had this big meal and you're running around. So having a soup maybe for lunch could really help you. If you still like to have your salads, and you don't want to listen to me, which often happens, you can either have all the same foods and just saute those salads, which is fine. Or if you still want to eat it as a salad, have a warm cup of soup and maybe a hot cup of tea. So you around the salad, I call this the raw food sandwich, so to speak, because now you're having a little warm. So you're warming up your digestive system. You eat the foods that you want. Then you have some warm liquids. You kind of putting the heat around the cold, that can help. But ideally, if you just have the warm foods that can make a big difference and you can lightly saute or steam the foods, whatever works for you. So fall into good habits. So it's not just about what we eat, right? It's all about what we're doing with our time, all these healthy habits to support us. So get out there into nature, go for a walk. It's beautiful, right now it's beautiful. Oh, I just went for a hike. Um, near me in Shelter Island. I went around there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The leaves are look amazing right now in the Northeast. It's beautiful. Um, so get out there, get out into nature, walk around, um, you know, and just breathe it in, you know, take a, take a look at all the sights, let all the five senses, um, you know, really just embrace all of it. Embrace the change that's going on with the season, right? So enjoy fall, enjoy what's to come. Um, you know, really having that good mindset about everything is important and it can be really tough. These are challenging times that we're going through. So really lean on your support system if you need them. Um, but look around, there's beauty everywhere, right? Mind body relaxation. So, so the mind body connection is huge. You know, we know that it exists. One doesn't exist without the other. Um, they all make, make a big deal. So, you know, getting out there, exercising, movement in the body. Um, and I'm gonna talk about some other techniques that you can do, but knowing, um, so one of the things I love to talk about is, is workouts for your specific blood types. So different blood types release stress hormones differently. Um, A's are really benefit from meditation, yoga, Pilates, um, things, st even stretching, deep stretching can be really good for them. B's, really, even though we all benefit from being in nature because we get a dose of those negative ions, 
Um, but bees really release their stress hormones when they're out in nature, hiking around, tennis, golf. Um, now maybe golf more so, but there's still tennis. There's pickleball is a big thing that's out by me. People are playing that. The weather's still nice enough. Um, biking, if that if that suits your fancy, you could do that. Uh, O's really release stress hormones doing strength training, um, particularly early in the morning. That's what they say. So get out there, throw some weights around. And then ABs are a combination of all of it, the cardio, the strength, and the stretching and all that stuff. So, so really get those good habits working for you. If you're feeling stressed out, get into your body. Um, you know, if your body's not not working for you, then really get into the mind, meditate, do what you have to do. And I'm going to talk about some other techniques too. Um, so yeah, so I was just talking about this before, some more healthy habits. So nature has these negative ions, which really benefit us because um, we're, you know, we're, we're full of all the cells within our body um, have all these electrical charges, right? Too. So positive ions are in really urban areas, dense. We get positive ions from our computers that we're looking at right now from our phones from the wi-fi and they're really stress they're put a stress on our body you know we don't think of them as a stress but but they are um even though we need them and it's part of our life to use we want to limit the amount that we're using it the negative ions we get from nature so going for a walk um, on the sand walking barefoot in the ground we get a good dose 20 minutes barefoot in the ground and you get a good dose of those negative ions um the time right uh, after a storm those two hours after it and especially right after it there's tons of negative ions that are going on in nature in fact the time right before a thunderstorm or a big storm, there's tons of positive ions and you see all the animals, you know, kind of uh, buzzing around and everyone's trying to find shelter and everything. Those are because there's in, you know, in nature that's kind of being set off. So it's kind of interesting how even with nature we have that. But anyway, nice sunny day, you're full of negative ions. Get out there, do some grounding if you want um, and get a good dose, nice healthy dose um, of the vitamin D too taking deep breaths outside. So really pulling into and doing um, belly breathing. I think I'm gonna talk about breathing a little bit more here, but I'll take a moment and talk about it here. And when you're outside, really getting those deep breaths and using your lung chi when you breathe into the belly. Um, and the one way to test yourself, you put your hands on your chest and your hands on your belly and you wanna bypass your chest. So you wanna breathe into the belly and expand the belly and then relax back into the belly. And then if you're lying down, you can push the belly down towards the table or down to the ground and then just breathing in, but you don't want your hands on your chest to move. So it's just with the belly. Um, so it's really nice to get that deep breath in and that helps us support the lung chi. So as that helps, the lung chi is all about circulating energy all around the body. So now you're getting the oxygen going everywhere that it needs delivered to all the cells of the body. It's really good. Meditating under a tree. It's a great season to do that with the leaves falling. Think about yourself as a as a leaf, you know, just flailing around falling or being easygoing like a blade of grass, you know, that you can just, all the little doggies or squirrels step on the grass and then the healthy blade of grass will bounce back. But if it's an unhealthy blade of grass that isn't coming from good soil, hasn't been watered, doesn't have the nutrients that it needs, it's like a brown blade of grass coming up. If any kind of animal steps on that, it's just gonna snap that blade of grass. So think about yourself being nourished, hydrated enough, being a healthy green blade of grass, something in the environment come by and steps on you, you're having a rough day, you're able to bounce back. That's the point. Um, doing some kind of scavenger hunt in nature, this is great with the kids, um, pumpkin and apple picking, just get out there and do it. Um, I went on a little wagon ride the other day. You no, know, it's just fun. You just go out and you do these things, be around it. The fall season is in here forever. So take advantage. Uh, anyone into gardening, um, it's a great time to plant the spring bulbs. So there's certain times each season that you should be doing things for gardening. So that's one little tip I have. Unfortunately, I, I don't have know much about gardening, but I did come across that information. So thought I'd share. And then, you know, unplug to reset, you know, so really take this time to reflect, take the time to decompress, 
so that, you know, we're going to be going into holiday season. So, you know, we're going to need our energy. So just relax, knowing that there's a lot um, that happens during our relaxation, you know, just because you're, you're taking a day for yourself or taking a half day or whatever it is, there's so much that's manifesting. And it's really good to tap into that parasympathetic nervous system. It allows us to thrive, bring stress to a minimum, really does benefit ourselves. And then I thought this was cute, decorating with nature, you know, using pine cones or acorns, gourds, um, making little wreaths out of dried leaves or fruit, little napkin rings out of corn wreath or husks, um, doing little cornucopia arrangements, fall garlands. I love seeing that um, with the with the leaves around or, you know, the or orange lights look nice. I'm using pumpkins as planters. In fact, there's a... Um, there's a spot around here, I have to go in Huntington Village where they're making um, the pumpkin lattes in pumpkins, which is great. People are lining up out the doors for it. I have to go there. Um, myself and Lindsay, my office manager, we said we're gonna go. So I think this week we're gonna go. We have to treat ourselves. So, you know, such a cute thing to do. Really jump into the season, doing all sorts of things with cinnamon sticks, you know, with food, decorating with them using mason jars and just, you know, having a ball, doing lots of fun things. And it's a time for change. So think of any changes that you want to make. This is a good time now to think about it. And now check in with your lifestyle. So are you eating well? Are you eating enough? Are you hydrated? So with water, with being well hydrated, you want to make sure you're drinking quality filtered water, uh, not plastic water bottles, guys. So water, half your body weight in ounces of filtered water. Um, so if you weigh, for example, 120 pounds, you want to be drinking 60 ounces of water. So if you've got a nice 20 ounce uh, glass bottle, you drink three of those. So try and have one in, the, one in the morning, one around lunch or after lunch, and then another one in the evening. And there you've got your 60 ounces, you know, so just split it up for whatever that means for you. Are you enjoying life? Are you stressing out too much about things? Are you sleeping well? Is it that time, the, the long time between three to five? Is there another hour um, that you're up? It, with acupuncture, we look, we think about the Chinese medicine clock. So I know at least I do. So it's something to think about because it corresponds with different organs. Are you, is it, are you having trouble falling asleep? Are you having trouble staying asleep? So these are all the things that we want to think about um, and how can you get better rest? Uh, is your phone right next to you? Is it the exposure with the Wi-Fi and the phone? And is that hindering your sleep? So some real things, check in with yourself about what's going on um, and how your sleeping environment is or something we call bedtime hygiene. What are you doing that hour before you go to sleep? Uh, are you having a cup of chamomile tea? Are you having a nice bath? Or are you on the phone the whole time and you're suppressing your melatonin when you're on the phone? So that's not a good thing. So something to think about. Do you feel rested when you get up? So some people say, um, oh yeah, I have no problem sleeping, but I'm so tired. So what's going on there? Um, you know, do you have to look deeper? Do we, do we have to think about cortisol? Um, why are you feeling depleted? Why are you not feeling rested? Um, how's your energy? In general, is it dipping during a certain time of day? Um, you know, all these things are really important. Timing um, of the day. Can, uh, can really help uh, when we're looking at things. So it's important. So be prepared when you go see a naturopathic doctor, they're gonna ask you tons of questions. Uh, and it's okay if you don't know, you know, you can always tell them later, but to think about all these things beforehand um, are really gonna help me piece the puzzle together with, you know, what's specific for you. Uh, what's your self-talk like? You know, what's going on? Are you feeling depressed or anxious? Um, it starts with you. So what's, what's going on in your world? what's um what's happening so lots of things to think about you know what's your conversations with yourself what do you tell yourself um how much is stress affecting you these are all things and ways that you can help to support yourself so relaxation in the mind in the body um oh and then i brought up this imagine yourself as a leaf so that's that um that leaf analogy that i was telling you about really helps to um have that have that um have that image of, oh yeah, that's really relaxing. I, I can be like that. I can at least have that, um, you know, sensation behind myself of wanting to be, be
be like a leaf and um and it really just makes you relax like oh yeah that's really relaxing that's a, that's a nice thing to think about okay so whatever you have to do to get into nice relaxing mindset essential oils um having a conversation with a good friend a loved one that you feel supported by um really make it a priority so wet sock treatment i love talking about this this thing this treatment costs nothing and it's one of my favorite ways to boost the immune system. It's also one of my favorite things I love to do to just have your face be glowing. Um, it's a form, so it's hydrotherapy is really effective using water as therapy for the body. So different temperatures of water, cool and hot can help to support the body. Alternating between these temperatures, et cetera, all different ways to use it for the body. Um, so we learned all different techniques in naturopathic medical school, which were really wonderful. Um, and this wet sock treatment is really effective. So it's really easy. If anyone wants more information, just reach out to me. I'm happy to send you the handout that I sent to my patients about it, but I'll give you the real quick uh, way to do it. You can, with kids, you can tell them it's magic socks. They love it. But at the first onset of not feeling well, I do this at night, right before you go to bed and you can do it three nights in a row. Sometimes people get away with one night and they feel good and that's all that they need. So you just, you have, you could soak your feet or just wash them. You just want clean feet before you go to bed. You soak cotton socks, cotton ankle socks in cold water, really, really cold water. You wring them out, you put them on your clean feet. Then you take dry woolen socks or wool blend. Sometimes that's easier to find uh, that go up to your shin um, or ski socks that go all the way up to your knee, wherever you want, just higher than the ankle socks. And you put the nice warm woolen socks over you and you go to sleep. The next morning, you're going to wake up. The socks are naturally going to dry because your body is doing everything to heat up those socks. So you're getting all the blood lymph movement, blood movement, circulation throughout the body. It's increasing the circulation to boost the your immune system just with these cold feet. You're gonna have super warm and toasty feet when you wake up. And most likely you're gonna have a resolution um, of, of whatever what was ailing you. And if you need to do it for three days, do it for three days in a row. Really great way to boost your immune system if you need. And I think it also just, um, it, your face is just glowing. You just feel really good after it in general. So, but if you feel that, you feel a little, you know, sniffle coming on cough, try the wet sock treatment, it's really great. Dry brushing, one of my favorite things to do, and I love doing this as a, this is a daily habit that everyone should be doing before the shower. Um, it supports the lymphatic system. I always talk about the lymphatic system. I feel like it's a forgotten system. Nobody talks about it. It's right underneath. So if you do a deep tissue massage, you're gonna miss it. The lymphatic system is right underneath our skin and just ever so slightly gent touching it. We're hitting our lymphatic system. and. Our lymphatic system is part of our immune system and all of our lymph nodes, they're in there. Um, all of these little immune cells are in there. We want to have good flow throughout the body. So what you do is you can get, you can use a dry washcloth even if you have, or if you have um, the bristle brushes with a handle on them and you're, you want to go from your extremities. So all the way from the tips of your fingers, you go in circular motions all the way to your heart. You can do nice, long overlapping strokes from your feet, the tops of your feet, all the way up to your heart, the sole of your, your foot, all the way up to your heart, the back through the back of your leg, um, your glutes, don't forget your glutes and your back all the way to the heart. You do this daily before the shower. Um, it takes like a minute or two, however long you want to. And uh, and then the toxins come to the surface and they take the shower and then you wash them away. It also just feels nice and invigorating. And it's really great to do. So, you know, when you're feeling sick, that's not the time to work out because you don't want to send an infection deeper into the body. That's the last thing that you want to do. So, um, but this is a great thing to do is dry brushing. If you are feeling sick and you can't work out, um, doing this dry brush and gets the lymphatic system moving, gets things moving. It's really good um, to do it, it all the time. And then even if you're sick, this is one way to get the lymphatic system moving. Um, and it's a great way for detoxing, right? Because the lymphatic system is a way that we kind of purge toxins out of ourselves. So this is a great way to support detox too. Respiratory support, right? How many of the <laughs> low colds, little sniffles, something here. Essential oils are great. Um, 
in addition to everything else we were talking about supporting the immune system, doing essential oils, if, um, just inhaling them, right? Just breathing them in. I've got some cinnamon right here. Cinnamon, so nice and warming. Mm, I love reading that. I've got some of my eucalyptus is sitting right here. Um, cinnamon's warming. Mint family tends to be a little cooling. So um, maybe if you have a fever, some mints um, might be nice to smell. Um, Lavender is really relaxing. So all of them are really great. Um, if you want to apply it as a chest rub, you can use some coconut oil as a carrier oil and just put a drop of the oils in and then you can rub it on your chest or you, on your back also to, to get into the lungs. That's another great way of absorbing it through. And then breathing techniques. So um, there's so many out there. Um, in terms of relaxing, a few quick tips I love to share. Having the exhale be a couple more seconds longer than the inhale is a great way to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, I'm always in the salt cave talking about our parasympathetic nervous system. So you, that's our that's our rest and digest system. Tapping into our parasympathetic nervous system allows us to thrive uh, and really thrive as humans and as people and, uh, and live our best lives. So being as relaxed for as many moments of the day as possible is really beneficial for our overall wellness. There's a cooling technique. So if you feel a fever, if you feel hot um, and you wanna cool off, because you feel like this heat is um, just wearing you down because don't be aware of a fever. A fever is a great way of the body just expelling toxins from us. But if you feel a little overheated, you wanna cool off a breathing technique um, that's cooling is you roll your tongue if you're able to, not everyone can do it. Oh, good. <laughs> So you roll the tongue and then you inhale. So all of our organs, we can see through our tongue. Our tongue is the one muscle in the body that we can see. So in Chinese medicine, doing acupuncture, I'm always doing a tongue diagnosis and checking the pulse. But with the tongue, all the organs are right there. So if you take a nice inhale, you're going to, you feel the cooling, right? I just felt the cooling there, all the organs. You're gonna cool down your system, right? Feel like your blood pressure, your heart rate, you're in a really stressful situation and you just wanna cool down, cool your system down because you feel the heat rising. That's a really great time to do it. Just try and roll the tongue and do a nice inhale. That inhale brings that cool rush of air over it. Uh, and it covers the tongue, which corresponds with all the organs. Ooh, I just got a chill through my body. I'm telling you guys, it works. Can you guys see it? <laughs> I'm like, little goosebumps on my arm. Um, so for real, these things work. Um, and then the warming technique. So doing like, um, like fire breathing. So, um, you know, doing, you know, there, there's all different techniques, um, but things like that can be really warming. So like quick breaths in and out, um, something called fire breathing is good. Um, and you can look YouTube and check these out. So if you're cold and then you want to really heat the body up, you can do that with, with your breath. So it's really interesting, always using our bodies as a tool to help us. So supplements, can't stress enough, get a doctor that does the proper testing for vitamin and mineral deficiency, find out what you need, um, don't guess, get it tested, um, quality supplements. So you wanna make sure that you're getting your supplements from either a practitioner who knows how to prescribe properly the types of supplements, um, getting them, I want to say, you know, getting them off of Amazon there. Unfortunately, they're repackaging supplements on there. Your chances are you're not going to get good quality. Um, so just make sure you're getting them from a qualified practitioner or quali like a really good health food store. And you know, the quality, um, the brand, you're familiar with them of what you're getting. And if you don't find someone who really knows this stuff, because it's important and you always want to supplement to a really good diet. Okay. You don't just want to be going to their drive through and then, oh, make sure I take my supplements. What's the point in that? You know, really nurture yourself with all the healthy foods we were talking about in the beginning and then supplement to a really good diet and then reassessment. So you don't want to be on the same supplements. I'm always saying less is more. I'm trying to get my patients off of supplements. If we have to be on supplements initially, get them off of it, right? No one wants to just be taking a bunch of supplements for the rest of their life, just for the time being then make sure you get the levels where you want to be. You're feeling good. You can wean off of them. Probiotic. This is a good one, right? With gut health, we want to be on a really good quality probiotic. More and more research is coming out. All the different types of strains of bacteria to benefit um, certain things within your body. There's a there's women's probiotic. 
there's children's probiotic, um, there's different probiotics for different infections in the body. Get a quality probiotic for you and make sure you're eating tons of fiber because those are the prebiotics that feed the good bacteria in those probiotics. Um, and then here's just some supplements. So overall, um, you know, you want to have vitamin C, real, real power player right now. Everyone's taking vitamin C. That's good. Make sure you're not having loose stools. Um, I see this a lot. People are taking so much vitamin C. They're having loose stools. They don't know why. Sometimes we have to back off the, the dose of vitamin C. But vitamin C is great if you're taking it every day. You're having proper bowel functioning. And then if you get sick, it's the type of supplement that you can take even more of. So every two hours, you can take another dose of vitamin C and that can really help to support your immune system. So make sure, you know, vitamin C is really good to have around. Vitamin D, make sure you're taking at the proper dose because vitamin D and vitamin E, powerful antioxidants, um, but they're fat soluble. So vitamin D, you want to make sure you want to know your levels. You want to make sure you're right at the optimal level between 60 to 80 on labs. And then wherever you're at, take the proper dosage to get you to that optimal level. Don't just shoot in the dark and take a random. I see people, they're just taking 2000 IU. It's not nearly what they need, close to what they need to be taken um, to get it high. I'm here on the East Coast. So vitamin D um, deficiency or insufficiency is really high. I see it all the time. Um, tons of mushrooms are great for immune support. Elderberry is really popular. Uh, selenium, you can get in a supplement, also get a, eating a couple of Brazil nuts a day. Selenium is great for supporting the immune system. Zinc is wonderful, powerful antiviral, powerful to support the immune system. Uh, stragulus is another powerful herb. Be careful uh, with echinacea because that's a short-term acting herb. So if you are taking echinacea, make sure it's only for a maximum seven days. Don't be taking that long-term. Um, with allergies, so there's quercetin that I was talking about, bromelain, uh, stinging nettles are really good, really powerful support for calming down inflammation with allergies. And then there is a supplement. So anyone who eats quail eggs, there's a supplement that, and the in main ingredient in there is quail eggs. And for some reason, <laughs> that quail egg powder is really powerful um, with allergies and fighting allergy season. Um, so when you get a health plan, uh, with me. So we're looking at a really comprehensive health plan. So just like I was talking in the beginning, so bringing this full circle. So nutrition being first and foremost, okay, taking into consideration the seasons, what foods are available to us. Um, also maybe uh, taking out some foods that you're eating that are impacting your health in a negative way. Um, might have to do testing for it um, or might just present with you know that you don't eat well eating a certain way. Sometimes I ask my patients to bring in a food log and we'll take a look at how they're feeling, um, how they had bowel movements and corresponding to what their meals were prior to that or around that time. Um, all the lifestyle changes, the healthy habits that are good for you. And there's tons of them. Maybe we'll do a wet sock treatment. Um, maybe that's gonna be good for your kids. Maybe we need to get some dry brushing going in. Um, maybe you're not motivated to exercise. So we have to start with dry brushing. Um, or maybe I can give you a few exercise tips. Um, maybe we have to work on relaxation or meditation. Anywhere that we can work on to help you. Um, that's what a naturopathic doctor works with you at. And then we can always build from there. So these health plans, they're always going to change. Every time you meet with your doctor, they're going to update this. And then supplements. So just what's necessary. So taking the right supplements for you. Um, to get you on the right track and then weaning you off. So making sure that you check in with your practitioner and don't just stay on supplements for the longest time. Um, you could be doing more harm than good. And I love to work with daily affirmations with my patients. So this is soul food to empower you. So I work, I have um, little cards here that I'll write uh, be a, a phrase, something to empower them through their healing journey to feel better. Um, and it really does make a difference. It's a phrase that you can say uh, in, sometimes in your bathroom mirror each day and you say it, you wanna believe it and it really does make you feel better and at least assist you as you're going through. So I really do love the daily affirmations. So as long as my patients love to work with it, I love to work with them too. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna see if there's any questions, um, but. You can follow me here. So again, I'm Dr. Dawn. I work at Intersource Health. 
um, primarily based in Huntington, New York. It's here on Long Island. Uh, we do also have an office in Manhattan. I work alongside um, other naturopathic doctors and acupuncturists, um, also an acupuncturist and Reiki practitioner. If you're curious um, about naturopathic medicine, if it and your acupuncture, feel free to call in for a 10 minute free consult. And uh, you can call us, I didn't put my number here, but you can call Lindsay, my office manager at 631-421-1848. She'd be happy to assist you. I'd be happy to talk to you about that uh, and see if you have any questions um, for me that I, can, that I can help you out with. I'd be happy to talk to you and then hopefully meet you. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram at drdawnnd. I'm always posting um, different foods and that I'm cooking. May or may not be with recipes, but I'm posting them. Um, you can follow me on Facebook too, or you can always email me if you have any questions, drdawn at innersourcehealth.com. So I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did. I'm just going to check here and see in the chat if there are any questions. Um, so if anything comes up, feel free to email me. This is also going to be going on our YouTube page. Um, but as always, I thank you for being here with me and hope that you guys enjoy the rest of this beautiful fall that we're having. Okay. And take time to smell the roses and enjoy and maybe have a nice cup of soup or tea today. Okay.